So one of the question was, um, in your opinion, what will be the biggest innovation to come in the next 10 years? And maybe this one you can, sorry, practice. So. <laughs> no, okay. Being no, safe. I, 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 I can hear you better. If you in your opinion, what will be the biggest innovation to come in the next 10 years? And, and actually, what do you will see your theory of consciousness going in 10 years from now? You are talking about the next yeah. book. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, the, you know, my hope would be that in 10 years, a sufficient number of people understand what I'm talking about, because returning meaning and purpose to human life is the most important innovation that we need, okay? Technological innovation, great. They, are, they, they, they are continue to occur, they will take their course. But if we do not evolve our consciousness and the sense of who we are, we are doomed because this technology otherwise will be used against us. Okay? That's, that's it. Perfect. As simple as that. Okay, so reading another question here. Who do you think will be the most influential um, person or agency into this uh, uh, new innovation process? Well, I mean, the, the, I mean basically, the, the people that are awakening, that understand that we are not machines, and they want to understand who are we, really, and beginning to move in a direction of personal discovery. This, this job has to be done by each one of us. It cannot be done by reading a book and repeating what you read. You got to do it within yourself. Each each of us need to understand who we are within ourselves. That's the only way that is going to work, because only within yourself you know if what you perceive is right or wrong, and you know it absolutely if you are really serious about it and you want to know. You will know. The same way that happened to me 30 years ago. I was unhappy about my life after having achieved everything. They should, the world says that if you do this, you should be very happy, you know, and I wasn't. It was the time of, I was studying consciousness, study uh, neural networks, uh, neuroscience, biology, and so on. I wanted to understand this stuff. And I had a major, you know, an opening where basically, you know, is in the book, you know, I, I cannot, there's no time to, to tell, but basically, I experience myself as the world that observes itself. Now, that, that's a mind bender. How, how can you be the world that observes itself? That's you, you have to experience that. You, you, it's not something that is logical, exactly like quantum physics is non logical. How can an electron be a particle and a wave? Exactly the same problem. And I experience me as a particle, the observer, mm -hmm. and the wave, the world. This is very interesting because the next question that we receive, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, unusual for, for the environment of engineering, but uh, what is your view on soul versus consciousness? Is, consci is consciousness, in your words, the same as soul in many philosophers? Uh, the consciousness is the capacity to experience through feelings and sensations. What, what philosophers call qualia, the fact that I, I know, not because I have signals in the brain, a computer has signals in the brain and it does whatever it does, it goes from signals to action, no, nobody home there, no feelings, no sense of self, no sense of the world, no understanding of what it's doing. But we have, between the signals and the experience of the signals, which is qualia, something happens. Okay, that capacity is not in this physical world. It is in another physical world, which is the world, the quantum world I was mentioning before. So it's like, look, suppose that you are controlling a character in a computer, right? You know, like a, you know, like a video game, right? But, but, but not with joysticks. You know, you, ha you have a costume that every mo movement that you make is automatically taken so that you actually the, you know, the, yeah. the character simply does what you do without you having to think about it. 
then you have your goggles, you see in 3D the virtual world, and you hear the voices of people there, and, and, and you know, and, uh, and your voice is heard. So suppose that you are in this environment, okay? Now, you have a sense, you, you basically think that you are in a, in, a, in a real world. I mean, you see space, mm. you see space, but what's, where is the space? The space in the virtual world is not this space, is the space created by the computer, yeah. but you perceive space. Yeah. You move, you do, you do stuff. You can even get so enthralled or so, you know, so, you know, captivated by the game that you forget that you are actually in this world, yeah. especially if you are a kid, right? And so all of a sudden, your consciousness is focused on only that reality, okay? But where is the experience? Yeah. Where is the reality? Is it in the computer? Yeah. Is it in the character of the computer? No, it's in you, yeah. all right? Now let's make it another step now. My consciousness of this physical world is not in me. It is in that entity, quantum entity, that where the experience resides. Yeah. So my body is like the avatar in the computer. But have you seen the the Marvel movie Ant Man, where the guy goes back into the quantum realm? It sounds like we're 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 in the space. It cannot, if you it, haven't seen it, it you cannot, need. To. <laughs> but the point is, they cannot go back to the quantum realm. Yeah. You see, that that's the whole point. The whole right. point is that there is you know it, you know it is a irreversible irreversible right. Right. transformation. Right. I mean, the quantum world is many dimensions, yeah. n dimensions. That's where we have the experience. Right. So I mean. People don't understand quantum. Mm. That's the problem. But everybody says quantum, but you know, but saying quantum and understanding quantum, two different things. Yeah. Maybe Serge, if I go back to your first question, the answer to that from, from what I heard is it's like the innovation. It's not going to come from a government agency. It's not gonna come from a market leader. It's gonna come from just like everything else in innovation from an entrepreneur who understands the, these types of things. Yeah, but they, but they, yeah, they, 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 because the, the entrepreneur translates something, mm -hmm. okay? It, you know, translates something that is in his mind into a product, an idea that is, uh, you know, there are words or pictures or images or what have you. So an entrepreneur, uh, you know, is essentially a, a translator from a higher mind a higher mind where there is intention, purpose, and ideas Competence. into <laughs> symbolic form, yeah. which can be a product. You know, you know, a, 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 this is a symbol. In my model, this is a symbol. Right. My body is a symbol, mm. but my consciousness is not in the body. Mm. Okay, so, so, uh, it, 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 but really, it, just the the analogy or the metaphor of the you know the virtual reality that i made before can can get you pretty close to understanding what i'm talking about because when you control a character the experience of that world created by the computer the experience and of the character that you're embodying is not in the computer nor in the character you see mm -hmm. so that tells you immediately that we are ba pl playing the same game in this physical world this physical world is our construction we are constructing this and we think that we are living in it, but we are constructing it. The body is living in it, but the experience is not in this physical reality, is not in, in three plus one D. Mm. So that, that, that's how that's how powerful this is. Mm. I think you, and you Paul, and, and you, Federico, <coughs> have just uh, uh, answer the other answer question. The other question. <laughs> For someone just starting a career of engineering, where should they focus? I think this this is exactly you know the focus that we. I mean, but they, they should focus in what they really feel like that they want to do. The passion, I mean, the passion, what they're I mean, passionate I mean, about it. Exactly. Absolutely, the passion and, and and the desire and the that, that's really what drives everything is is the desire to do something. And, and then, you know, and then you take the, you know, the rest of it goes with it. But if you don't have the desire. You know, having, having started and founded uh, uh, a few companies, you know, it's such a cliche, but I, I have to ask, how, how do market leaders or established companies allow for this type of entrepreneurial spirit 
how do they break down the the natural bureaucracies that you know force people to leave the company and start their own uh, own ideas their own company uh, what well, i mean frankly they shouldn't even try to do that because because it is inherent in a structure when it reaches a certain level that the you know the number of, uh, of entrepreneurial spirit on average decreases yeah. right because you need more doing than than you know inventing new things so you, you need inventing too of course but percentage wise you know that not naturally decreases and so you know by people going out they provide new innovation that serve the company that let those people go out too. Yeah. In fact, you you know you can acquire the company then later if, yeah. if they are successful and let go the ones that were not. So successful. the best way is to to spin it out, to give them maximum freedom and well, you, you, don't you, try to manage in your corporate process. Well no, you, you you should you should manage the innovation necessary to go to the you know to the adjacency of the market in which you are you know you are you are operating. Of course you don't want to let that go. Yeah. But yeah. so you you need to maintain that ability to innovate but but you know but 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 you know you you cannot do everything and many people can have ideas that are not necessarily what the company should be doing so let them go i mean let them go do their stuff and then and then maybe five years later there is this company has done something that you didn't see right. and then you, right. you you can right. buy that company back exactly. Right? exactly in fact many 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 uh uh, many uh, small companies, startup companies, end up being bought by by a larger company. So, so Elon Musk just did this with Solar City, right? He just they, they spun it out, they created some things, and then yeah. they just bought Tesla, just bought them back. Then you bought it back yeah. because because it, it takes it takes a different environment. You know, a, a larger company becomes more bureaucratic. You know, an entrepreneur hates bureaucracy. Yes. It's, want to get things done like me you know. yes. Yes. <laughs> knock it down <laughs> any any other question from you no just to thank uh, federico for the time i mean this is the book silicon yes and uh, is, it is available on amazon and uh, you can also but also in italian it, also in italian Cilicio. Cilicio yeah. is published yeah. published also in italian and uh, uh you have also a website right uh, silicon the book yeah. dot com so if you want to uh, buy the book and read the other interesting story uh, inside the book, uh, please do so at Amazon. Yeah. And uh, I uh, just want to thank, thank you, Sergio, for putting this together. This was this was really great. And Federico, again, <laughs> thank, you, Sergio. thank yeah. you. Thank you for the for your time. Well, it's, it's been my pleasure. I always, always, always be happy to hear Federico. Uh, it's very interesting person as we you know, I've seen here and I was, you know, reading our uh, our the sentence here. Our technology starts with you. I think that is most appropriate that we can <laughs> ever choose having here Federico today. And uh, we I mean, I extend the invitation for your next book to present uh, our uh, I mean, the book next again year. here. Next you are year. always welcome here <laughs> in Santa Clara. You are our neighbor and uh, please visit us anytime you want. Thank you, Federico. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>